Hey, morning everyone. So time for another video. This is where it gets interesting. Um, so very quick recap. If you've not already seen the previous free videos, um, I showed you quickly how to deploy virtual gates via the marketplace in various different public cloud environments. So uh, this, this screen here is Microsoft Azure. This one here is Google Cloud. And this one here is Amazon Web Services. Um, the cost uh, varies around the different platforms. Um, GC, uh, GCP is 43p a day. Azure is 26p per day. And Amazon Web Services is 80p per day. And when I say... Um, when you look at that, it's relatively low costs. That is with the instances shut down. So what I've done is I've provisioned the compute, the storage, and then I've shut down the compute. So I'm only paying for the storage, um, and I'll continue to do that until we are completed with these videos. So all of them are online. Um, some of them can ping each other, some of them can. I believe that's to do with um, some security policies, solid policies within the cloud environments themselves. But what we're going to actually do now is we're going to create a fabric um, between them um, and build uh, an ADVPN mesh. So let's get cracking with that. So before we proceed with that, let's do a quick overview of the topology. So there's a virtual gate in Azure, there's a virtual gate in GCP, there's a virtual gate in AWS, and then time permitting, um, I do believe that I've got a 60E uh, at home somewhere, so we might make that the site D or the fourth site. Um, I've chose Microsoft Azure um, as the hub, which will be the BGP root reflector, um, no particular reason behind that other than I'm just more comfortable with um, deployments in Microsoft Azure. Okay, so we're going to crack on with creating the fabric between um, all three sites at the moment. So um, you go on the left-hand pane, security fabric, fabric connectors, security fabric setup, edit. Uh, this site on the left hand side is going to be the root, that's Azure. We do need to hook it up to 40 Analyzer, so I will go and get that information now. I'm going to send it up to my 40 Analyzer. Um, so we want to allow other um, devices to be able to join on the outside interface, which is always port one in all public cl cloud environments. Fabric name, we'll just do 40 bytes demo. Do I have authorization? Uh, I don't want them to be inside the same 40 cloud account. Um, can allow that. Um, just give them super admin. Um, we want the, the objects to be synced. Uh, this needs to be the IDP because it's the root. Uh, I'm going to leave everything else as default. There we go. So we do the same now on um, GCP. So security, fabric, fabric connectors, fabric setup. Join an existing fabric. The upstream gate IP. Auto. Do single sign on if we want. And yeah. Okay, so that's been sent off to for an application. And we will do AWS now, so Surety Fabric, Fabric Connectors, Edit, get the one IP of Azure. New single sign on. And yep. Okay. So we should have two notifications. Here. 
So let's have a look at that. Which one do we have here? So we've got a request from GCP and we've got a request from Amazon Web Services. So we'll allow them in. They're both in now. So you can see Azure, Amazon Web Services and GCP. We can see that all the appliances are running uh, version 725. Um, 726 did actually come out on Friday, but uh, we'll stick with 725 for, for this build. Um, and you can see on the right hand side that from a Fabric Connectors perspective, you can see that um, GCP knows that it's connected to a Fabric and Amazon Web Service also knows that it's connected to a Fabric. We can see that all the appliances are running uh, version 725. Um, 726 did actually come out on Friday, but uh, we'll stick with 725 for, for this build. Um, and you can see on the right hand side that from a Fabric Connectors perspective, you can see that um, GCP knows that it's connected to a Fabric and Amazon Web Service also knows that it's connected to a Fabric. Okay, so this is the fun bit now. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Fabric Overlay Orchestrator to um, build out the, the mesh between the sites. So I believe that this is located under... So on the left-hand pane, VPN, Fabric Overlay Orchestrator. We're doing this, with this on the root that we just configured, which is, in our case, Microsoft Azure. So we're going to enable it. You can see that it knows the topology. It's got AWS and GCP in here. We're just going to do full automatic because we're being lazy. So it's automatically elects the the hub as the the or the root as the hub, which should be the case. The incoming interface on all of them is going to be port one. That's the external interface. Pre-shared key. Um, I won't just keep the um, default autonomous system number um, and we're going to share the subnets that are on port 2 to the other environment. Probably need to make some amendments to that at some point as well, but uh, we're going to use the default loopback range as well. So summary, so enable it, hub, policy creation is automatic, incoming is port 1. This is the BGP AS number. This is the loopback range that's going to be used. And this is the shared subnet that's going to be used. <clears throat> You'll see that it's created um, some policies. Um, so let's have a look at what it's done. There, you can see it's created these policies, Fabric VPN. So this is the ability for the fabric to speak to the in, uh, inside interface, so port two. Um, this is the ability for the fabric to speak to the loopback that it's created. Um, and this rule here is for the ability for spokes to speak to each other um, via the ADVPN shortcuts that will create so if I go to VPN, Fabric Orchestrator, uh, enable on this one, and we say that it's a spoke. Shared interfaces is going to be port two. Next. And um, share 192.168.1.2. Summary there, let's create the same policies. Um, and we'll do the same. So VPN, Fabric Overlay Orchestrator, enabled. It knows it's a spoke because it's not a fabric root. Shared interfaces. Oh, might need to come, come back to that on AWS, actually. Um, and configure that. Yep, that's created. 
Uh, it's created the policies again. So in theory, there should be a, VP, a fabric. Okay, so one of the thoughts that I had is because public cloud environments are slightly different and generally behind load balancers and that, um, when you're creating the actual fabric, it wouldn't really necessarily have an understanding of that. So I've just gone into IPsec tunnels, fabric VPN one, um, and you can see that it's trying to dial against 10.0.0.4. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace that with a public IP address of the fabric root or the hub in, in Azure. I'm gonna do the same in um, AWS. And hopefully the tunnel should come up. Yeah, there we are, up, up. So up, 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 good stuff. Okay, so if we just quickly go through the topology now that the fabric has been created and the ABVPN mesh has been created on each of the appliances um, as per the configuration, there's been a loopback created um, of 10.20.1 and then .x. The, the, the X means look above, so for Azure it's dot one, for GCP it's dot two, for AWS it's dot three, and then for my home appliance, if I get round to it, is dot four. So if I just show you network interfaces, you can see that the hub is 10.20.1.1, so that matches what we have in the diagram. If you look to VPN and then uh, IP set tunnels, you can see that there is correctly two dial up connections been formed. The first one being GCP, the second one being Amazon Web Services. Um, and if you look from here, you can see that if I try to ping 10.20.1.1, which is Microsoft Azure, I can. And if I try to ping 10.20.1.3, which is um, AWS, I can. Same from AWS, so pinging from AWS to um, Azure, you can ping successful, and AWS to GCP, again, ping is successful. If I try to do a trace route from AWS to um, GCP, let's see, see that it goes straight directly between the two. And if I try to do execute trace route from GCP to AWS, so 10.20.1.3, yeah, you can see it goes straight between them. I just wanted to show you a few things. If I go on the hub, Go to dashboard network, you can see that there is uh, two shortcuts formed. So VPN one underscore zero and VPN one underscore one, they're shortcuts. Um, on the right hand side, I've done diagnose sniffer packet any host. I'm looking for the loopback address of AWS site C. Uh, I need to make sure that I source from that interface, so 10, 20, 1, 3, and then do execute ping, just put a 4 in that as well, ping um, 10, 20, 1, dot 2, yeah. yeah, so you can see it sees the ping come in, and it's sent out under fabric VPN one dot underscore zero, which is a shortcut path. So the traffic is no longer going via the hub. It's going straight from GCP to Amazon Web Services. I can just depict that on this picture. Um, so I've originated a ping from AWS to GCP, and it's used this blue dotted line the first few packets, just so you know, would have gone via the hub, so up and down, but then via Ike, uh, 
and at Fortinet AD VPN, the information is exchanged and these two sites will create um, an IPsec tunnel directly between themselves. So another cool thing, if I log out of this um, virtual gate in AWS and then log back in again, you will see that I am prompted to use single sign-on. 40 bytes is an account that I created on the Fabric route. You can see you log in and you'll see that I log in via SSO. This, has been, this configuration has been pushed down from the route. I've logged in via 40 bytes, single sign-on. Really, really cool. Okay, so that brings this particular video to a close. So just to summarize, we did a deployment in AWS, GCP, and Google Cloud. We created a security fabric um, between them. Then we used the new fabric orchestrator, the VPN orchestrator, to create uh, an AD VPN mech between them. It automatically created the loopback, did the BGP, uh, created the firewall policies on the hub and also <laughs> the spokes. And then we proved connectivity between all the sites using the loopback interfaces on all of them. In a normal deployment, you would have um, VNets or um, VPCs behind um, each of the uh, environments. So um, make sure that you're familiar with how to do the routing in there. Uh, what we're going to do now in the next video that we'll be released in a couple of days is we're going to strip the configuration back on all the appliances and we're going to build out uh, something similar, but we're going to bring in 40 Manager into the equation. So we're going to look at how to do a deployment using 40 Manager uh, and then we'll probably lead into another series around looking at things like provisioning templates, blueprints, uh, variables, that kind of thing, how, how to use them effectively. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, uh, I'm trying to get to um, 700 subscribers. If you could please subscribe, hit the like button and let me know any feedback that you may have in the comments, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye now.